Unit 5, it's openness in the goods and financial markets. And let's go for it. So in learning unit two, three, and four, we considered a closed economy, only one country. And now in learning unit five, we're going to add the foreign section in order to determine the output and income in an open economy. So there are three different, um, or three, three openness, um, ways of openness. It can be openness in the goods market, the financial market, or the factors market. So the goods market openness, that means that consumers have the ability to choose between domestic or foreign goods when they want to purchase or mer merchandise. The financial market openness means that financial investors has the option to choose between money, domestic financial assets and foreign financial assets. To cons and they will consider not only the domestic um, interest rate, but also the foreign interest rate and the exchange rate. And then openness in factor markets that refer to the ability of firms to choose in which country they want to locate their production or for workers to choose in which country they want to work. So in this module, in Learning Unit 5, we're not going to consider the openness in the factor markets. We're just going to look at your openness in your goods market. Um, remember, Learning Unit 2 also referred to the goods market, and we're going to look at your openness in the financial market like we considered Learning Unit 3. Then a measurement for um, consumers to choose uh, for the openness of um, the goods market is imports and Im export as a percentage of GDP. Okay, so before we move further, there are certain terminology that you need to understand before you can consider this um, learning unit. So currency, that's the system of money used in a particular country, so for South Africa, that is RAND. The exchange rate then is the relative price of one currency expressed in terms of another currency. The nominal value of goods is the value in terms of money versus the real value, which is the relative price of goods. So that's your nominal value adjusted for inflation, and that measures the value of goods in terms of other goods. So the nominal exchange rate, um, there's two ways how you can express it. There's your direct method, which is the price of the foreign currency in terms of the, of the domestic currency, or the indirect method, the price of the domestic currency in terms of the foreign currency. So what that means, this is your indirect uh, method. So it's the price of the domestic currency in terms of your foreign currency. So it tells you that how much is one rand um, is you going to get $0.05. And your direct method is the one that you will usually hear in the news, which says the price of $1 is equal to 19 rand. But in this learning unit, it's important to remember that we are going to use the indirect method when we speak about the nominal exchange rate. Then an appreciation of the nominal exchange rate, that means the price of the domestic currency in terms of the foreign currency increases. So your domestic currency is worth more. You are going to get more dollars for your rand, for example. And then a depreciation on the other hand is where your price for domestic currency in terms of foreign, foreign currency decreases. Your domestic currency is worth less. So let's consider it in both scenarios, both in the indirect and the direct um, way. So if your one rand, if in, in the one year you used to, uh, in one day it was one rand was equal to 0 0.55 dollars and it changes to one rand becoming 0 0.05 dollars. That in this case your exchange rate depreciated, your domestic currency became worth less, you get more or less dollars for one rand. In a similar fashion, the other way around will be your um, the price of dollars um, will go up so and your domestic currency is worth less. So you can you have to pay more rands to get one dollar. Then the other side is um, if your one rand changes from 0 0.55 to 0 0.59, that means you're going to get more dollars for your rand. 
that's an appreciation. Your domestic currency is worth more. Similarly, the, the inverse of that would be if one dollar used to be 19.38, it now is 18.95, which means you pay less for a dollar, your, so your domestic currency is worth more. Okay, so remember that, but just remember again, we're going to use this format in the learning unit five. So again, let's do an activity where we can practice our exchange rate information. So remember, we use this international convention where your nominal exchange rate is as the price of domestic currency in terms of the foreign currency. So let's choose the correct option in brackets. An increase in the nominal exchange rate, so this value will go up, implies that the price of the domestic currency in terms of foreign currency increases. So question B is actually exactly the same as question A. They just, instead of domestic currency, they said South Africa. So an increase in the nominal exchange rate between South Africa and the US implies the price of rand increases in terms of dollars. Let's consider option C. An increase in the nominal exchange rate leads to a what of the domestic currency. So if this increases, it means you get more dollars for one rand. So it's an appreciation. Your domestic currency is worth more. An increase in the nominal exchange rate between the South Africa and the US implies that more, fewer rands must be paid for a dollar. Remember, it's the other way around. And then if the nominal exchange rate between the rand dollar changes from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, the nominal exchange rate increases. Okay, so the, if the nominal exchange rate increases in the dollars, you get more dollars for your rand. Okay, now we're going to consider the openness in the goods market. Remember, I started off by saying there are three ways and we're not going to consider this one. We are going to consider the openness in the goods market and openness in the financial market. So we are looking at this section now. So from the nominal to the real exchange rate, let's just think about that. The nominal exchange rate between the rand and the dollar tells us how much a dollar will cost. So this was what we've done over here. Okay, now a real exchange rate tells us what happened to the relative price of domestic goods in terms of foreign goods. This will give an indication of the affordability of domestic goods compared to foreign goods, which will influence the choice of economic participants. The formula that we're going to use to calculate the real exchange rate is this formula. It tells you that the nominal of the real exchange rate is equal to the nominal exchange rate, E, times the domestic price level divided by the foreign price level. So if we have to do an example of how you calculate the real exchange rate, if you get your, um, that that's your foreign price level, you've got your domestic price level, and then you've got your exchange rate. So your real exchange rate will be, this is your formula, you're going to um, replace the symbols with values. So let's consider the nominal exchange rate is the 0 0.5 times your um, domestic price level, which is the 46.50, divided by your foreign price level, 5.58, and that gives you a 4.16, so that your real exchange rate is equal to 4.16. Now that 4.16 doesn't really tell us much, it's an index number. For, to, for this to make sense, we have to consider what's going to happen to the real exchange rate over time. So let's look at a change from year one to year two in the nominal exchange rate and what happens, what's the impact on the real exchange rate. So you get, you've got your formula to calculate the real exchange rate, what we've had the previous slide. Then in year one, you've got information that's given to you. So you're going to, again, replace your symbols with values to calculate the real exchange rate for year one. So you look here, over here you get your information that your nominal exchange rate is 0 0.2. You put that in there. Then your dom domestic price level is given as 110. And similarly, your 
um, foreign price level is also given as 110. So you calculate your real exchange rate for year one to be 0 0.2. So what happens if the nominal exchange rate changes? So in year one, your nominal exchange rate was 0 0.2, one rand was equal to 0 0.2 dollars, and now it changed to 0 0.1. So again, you're going to calculate your real exchange rate for year two by using your values. So you're going to use instead of the 0 0.2 for year one, in year two, it's going to be the 0 0.1 for your nominal exchange rate times 110 because your price levels change, remain the same. Divided by 110 gives you a real exchange rate in year two of 0 0.1. So. The, the real exchange rate declined from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1. So let's see. The nominal exchange rate from year one to year two went down but from one rand being 0 0.2 dollars to one rand being 0 0.1 dollars. So when we calculated the real exchange rate, the real ex exchange rate also went down. So there was a real depreciation. So the result is that the relative price of our goods compared with U.S. goods has declined as a result of the decline in the nominal exchange rate. This is what it tells you. So if you have to choose, you're going to choose South African goods because they became cheaper. Let's consider the impact of a change in the price level. So again, We've got our formula for calculating the real exchange rate. We get the information as supplied and we plug that values in to our formula to calculate the real exchange rate. Now we are consider a change in the price level. So in year one, your price for domestic goods 110 and then it increased in year two to 120. Again, you first have to calculate your real exchange rate in, for year two before you can make um, any conclusions. So you're going to put your values into your equation again, and you calculate the real exchange rate for year two to be 0 0.11 compared to the 0 0.1 in year one. So what happened? So the price level increased from year one to year two, and that resulted in the real exchange rate to increase as well. It's a real appreciation. So the relative price of South African goods, the EP component of our formula, compared with US goods has increased as a result of the increase in the domestic price level relative to the foreign price level. And this results in an increase in the real exchange rate, so a real appreciation. So what this tells us is that your the relative price level, your relative price level, an uh, increase in your relative price le re level um, leads to an appreciation, while a decrease in your relative price level leads to a depreciation. Okay, so what have we learned from the openness in the goods market? When the goods market are open, um, apologies for that. I don't know why my computer stopped. Okay, let me just quickly get you the presentation back. Okay, sorry, everybody. Can you still hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. I'm back. Sorry. Okay, here we go again. So like, what have we learned about the openness in the goods market? So what we've learned is when the goods market are open, the economic participants like your household, your firms and your government have a choice between buying domestic goods or foreign goods. And a key factor that influences this decision is the price of domestic goods re relative to foreign goods, so your real exchange rate. And the real exchange rate is influenced by your nominal exchange rate, your domestic price level and your foreign price level. So that is what you've learned about openness in the goods market. So now we're going to have an activity to, to practice that. So let's see, we've got this information and um, they give you the information for year one and the information for year two. So again, you're going to, the question is given the following information, calculate the real exchange rate and comment on the change. So 
you've got your formula for the real exchange rate. You plug in the values for year one, so your nominal exchange rate times your um, domestic price level of 140 divided by your international price level, and that gives you a real exchange rate of 0 0.25 for year one. In year two, you again have to calculate your real exchange rate for you to make a comment or to answer the question. So you're again going to plug in your values, your nominal exchange rate of 0 0.18 times your domestic price level of 180 divided by your international um, price level, and that gives you a real exchange rate of 0 0.27. So your real exchange rate in year two is higher than your real exchange rate in year one. So what happened? Your nominal exchange rate went down. It was a, there was, um, but your real exchange rate increased. And how did that, this happen? So your relative price, the increase in your relative price of your domestic goods um, compared to your international price were greater, and therefore there was a appreciation of the real exchange rate. So let's look at it one more time. So despite the increase in the nom of the decrease in the nominal exchange rate, the real exchange rate increases. And this is due to the increase in the domestic price level relative to the for foreign price level. So that's why you can't merely consider the prices. You, the, the exchange rate plays an extremely um, large role, and that's why you're going to consider your real exchange rate to make a decision. Okay, moving on to the openness in the financial market. So when the financial markets are open, financial investors can choose between money or domestic as well as foreign financial assets for their portfolio. And they're going to um, base their decision or they're going to assess whether to invest in foreign or domestic bonds depending on your interest rates, foreign and domestic interest rates, as well as the movements in the exchange rate, the expected rate um, about future exchange rates. So this is just a side point, it's not part of the study guide. I just thought we always use um, government bonds. And so I found this section on the Treasury's website on what are South African bonds. So the government of South Africa, via the National Treasury, has to raise money in the financial market to finance the total budget deficit during a fiscal year. Most governments raise their funds via the tax system. But however, to raise as much money as would be needed to fund the total government spending, the rate of taxation would be higher than is politically or economically acceptable. And therefore, to fund any shortfall, the budget deficit, the government borrow money by issuing bonds. And these bonds are issued in the domestic currency and are considered to be very a, secure, a very secure form of investment. Okay, so we're going to consider the choice between domestic and foreign assets, in, in this case now bonds. So how are you going to calculate what the value of your, your return on a bond is for the African bond market? You're going to say the RAND value that you're going to invest times one plus the domestic interest rate, you earn your interest, and then you get your answer, and hopefully, probably, it's going to be a higher RAND value. Then, if you're going to consider US bonds, so you've got a RAND value that you want to invest in US bonds, let's look at this formula. I know when you just consider this, it might look quite um, overwhelming, but it's actually quite logical. So firstly, you've got your RAND value. The first step is to change this RAND value into dollars, because remember, you're going to um, get to invest in the US market. So the RAND times ET is your nominal exchange rate, gives you a dollar value. Then you're going to earn interest in America, so you, you're, um, you're going to add, you're going to multiply this dollar value times the 
foreign interest rate, one plus the foreign interest rate. Then at the end of the year, you're going to have your bigger dollar value. You, you've got your value plus your interest. And now you have to convert this back into rands. So you divide by the expected future um, exchange rate. And that is what this, this formula is all about. So although when you only look at it like this, it looks quite overwhelming, it's actually quite logical. You've got your RAND value, you times your exchange rate to get to dollars, you earn your interest, the international interest rate, then you get a dollar value that you have to divide the expected nominal exchange rate by to get back to your RAND value. Let's do an example of how this calculation works. So Duty Activity 17 asks you, it tells you that you've got 100,000 Rand and you will not need it for transactions, so you're not going to, 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 to keep it in money. So you're going to consider financial investment um, choosing between buying one year South African bonds or one year US bonds. They give you your information and the question is, will you buy South African bonds or US bonds? So they give you that the interest rate in South Africa is 11%. Just a side note, remember 11% is equal to 11 over 100, and you can then also write it as 0 0.11. Similarly, the interest rate on one year US bonds is given, so that's your foreign um, interest rate. You get your current exchange rate and your expected exchange rate. So, Firstly, you calculate the return on South African bonds. The formula for that we've seen in the previous slide is your RAND value times one plus the domestic interest rate, which is given as 11%. So 100 times 1.11, always remember you always firstly calculate your um, brackets, is going to be 111,000. Secondly, you're going to return, um, calculate the return on the US bond. So. Here's your formula. So at an exchange rate of 0 0.1, that's where I get that information from. The investment in US bond dollars is going to be equal to that portion. Your 100,000 times your exchange rate, it's $10,000. So your 100,000 times your exchange rate gives you your dollar value, $10,000. Now you're going to invest that $10,000 at your international exchange interest rate of 2.5% for a year. So it's going to be the $10,000 times 1.025, which gives you at the end of the year $10,250. Now we have to convert, this is this portion, the $10,250 back to rands. And you do that by dividing that value by the expected exchange rate, which is given as 0 0.09. So 10 to 5 says 50 divided by 0 0.09 gives you 113,888 rands. Just a side note is that you don't have to do it in all these steps. You can literally ju also just replace all your um, symbols with values. So it's 100,000 times 0 0.10 times 1 plus the 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.09. That is also going to give you the 113,888. So now you know that this value is greater than that value, which means you are going to buy US bonds. Question two and question three, what you're going to do is you're going to do exactly the same thing. But instead of using the 0 0.09, you're going to use in the one in, in question 2, 0 0.08, and in question 3, 0 0.11. You can go and try it, and then you are more than welcome to ask or um, post your attempts on the discussion forum, and we can see whether you were successful. Okay, the interest parity condition. The interest parity condition implies that through the process of arbitrage, the domestic interest rate must be approximately equal to the foreign interest rate minus the expected appreciation of or the depreciation of the domestic currency. Now, what on earth does this mean? Okay, firstly, the process of arbitrage. So arbitrage is where um, investors or 
the consumers take advantage of price differences across markets to make a profit. And what will happen in this process is that money will flow, will always flow to the place where they can get the highest return. But then the increase in demand will result in an increase in the price and the return will decline until the rate of return is the same in both countries. So this, this is the formula for the interest parity condition. So it says that the domestic interest rate, if this one, will be approximately equal to the foreign interest rate minus the expected appreciation of the domestic currency. So therefore, the interest parity condition tells us that when we have to decide between the domestic or foreign investment, so this one or this one, you should not only consider the difference between the interest rates, but you should also take the expected change in the exchange rate into account. According to the interest parity condition, a lower domestic interest rate leads to a depreciation of the nominal exchange rate. And this is because of this process. So the lower domestic interest rate, how does it happen? The lower domestic interest rate will cause a capital outflow, a lower demand for RAND, and therefore the RAND will depreciate. So your chain of events is that it's, it starts with a, a de decline in your interest rate, and that results in a depreciation of the um, exchange rate, the nominal exchange rate. So let's do an activity to test our understanding. So you remember you, um, your domestic interest rate and you've got your international interest rate, but you also have to consider the expected change in the exchange rate. And if you think about this, if you're going to um, say the increase is bigger, then you're going to deduct a bigger portion um, or, and that will make this international component lower. Okay, so you've given the information that the domestic interest rate in South Africa is 3% and the domestic interest rate in the USA is 5%. So just if you just consider it, then it might look that you, like your um, interest in the US will give you a higher return. So if there will be no change in the exchange rate, um, if you expect the Rand dollar exchange rate to be unchanged, then which one will you buy? You will buy the one with a higher return, which will be US bonds. Okay, but if you expect the RAND dollar exchange rate to appreciate by 5%, so this value, the expected exchange rate is going to go up in by 5%, should you buy South African bonds or US bonds? Which means this 5% interest, you're going to deduct a further 5%. So that means, the investment in South African bonds will be better. Similarly, if you expect the Rand dollar exchange rate to depreciate by 1%, so this is going to go down by 1%, it means um, the difference in the interest rate is 2%, but so you, you're, but you will still get the benefit even of the depreciation, the appreciation of the dollar. So you will invest in U.S. bonds. And then if they say, in spite of the difference between the interest rate in South Africa and the USA, speculators prefer to buy South African bonds. So what's going to happen? Why will they choose this? The reason for that will be they will expect the RAND to appreciate and that the appreciation will be more than the interest differential. Okay. Moving on to the current account and the trade balance. So the balance of payments records the country's transactions with the rest of the world and imports and exports of merchandise are visible in the trade balance. So service receipts, monies and payments for money from spent by tourists and payments for services are invisible in the trade balance. An increase in exports increase your foreign reserves and an increase in imports decrease your foreign reserves because you have to pay um, for your imports. So the trade balance deficit is when your imports are greater than your exports because your foreign reserves decrease. And a trade balance surplus is when your exports are greater than your imports. 
Remember, a budget surplus, the government's budget surplus is different. It's not the same as a trade balance deficit and trade balance surplus. A trade balance is about your imports and your exports. Your budget um, deficit or surplus refers to the difference between government spending and government to income, which is your taxes. Okay, then just a side note that gold exports are shown as a separate category because it's such an important component of South Africa's economy, so it's not included in your net exports in South Africa's balance of payment. And then the current account balance is where all the visible trade balance, invisible trade balance, net income and net transfer are captured. Okay, let's move on to some revision assignment questions. Hopefully by now you will be able to follow and answer them on your own. So in the case of South Africa, a change from one rand to, um, or is equal to 0.4 dollars to one rand equals 0.45 dollars. What does this imply? So let's consider statement A, an increase in the nominal exchange rate. That looks about right. 40 is 45 is higher than 40, that's correct. A decrease in the nominal exchange rate, not correct. A depreciation in the domestic currency. So that means you get more, that does not sound correct. Because your domestic currency increases, you get more dollars for your rand, your, um, your rand, the value of your rand increases, it's an appreciation. More rands are now needed to buy a dollar. Let's consider this, so you get more dollars for your rand, so no, fewer um, rands are needed to buy a dollar. So the statements which are correct will be A, D and F, it's not B and C, it will be A, D and F, it's number four. Okay, let's consider another question. An increase in the real exchange rate implies that. Now let's just think for ourselves, what does an increase in the real exchange rate mean? What is the real exchange rate? We've seen that the real exchange rate is the relative price of domestic goods in terms of foreign goods. So an increase in the real exchange rate means that the relative price of South African goods compared with US goods increases. And so if African goods are therefore relatively more expensive than US goods, and the other, the converse are also true that US goods are relatively cheaper. So if your goods are more expensive, your exports will decrease. So let's consider the statement. Statement A, South African goods are relatively cheaper than those produced in the rest of the world and increase in the real exchange rate. No, that's not true. South African goods are relatively more expensive than the goods produced in the rest of the world. Yes. If our goods are more expensive, what's going to happen to exports? Your exports will decrease. So not increase, it will decrease. The statement that's correct is B and D. That's number four. Okay, this is, um, this goes about the interest parity condition. And it's just a nice question to, give you a, um, a good overview of what the interest parity condition is all about. The interest parity condition tells the investor that when he or she decide, have to decide between domestic or foreign financial investments, he or she would consider the difference in the interest rate as well as the expected change in the exchange rate. Okay, and then the last one we're going to look at um, given the following information, you've got your interest rate in South Africa, um, South African bonds of 12% and the interest rate of, on US bonds of 8%. And then they asked which of the following statements are correct. So remember, this is about the interest parity condition because you've got your interest rates, but you also have to consider your the, the expected change in the exchange rate. So the difference between the um, the interest rates is four percent. So let's consider before we look at the specific statements. Let's just think what we are what we know whether financial participants will buy South African or U.S. bonds depends on the difference between the two interest rates 
as well as the expected change in the exchange rate. Although the interest rate is higher on South African bonds, it does not necessarily follow that the bonds are better investment because the difference between South African interest rate and the investment interest rate is 4%, we've seen that, and thus if the expected depreciation of the RAND is 5%, so if the expected depreciation of the RAND is 5%, financial market participants will buy bonds. By holding bonds, South African bonds, the investor will get a higher interest payment for the year, but the RAND will be worth less in terms of dollars at the end of the year, making the investment in South African bonds less attractive than investing in US bonds. So let's consider all the statements. If the expected depreciation of the RAND is 5%, financial market participants will be indifferent between South African and US bonds. That's not true. If the expected appreciation of the RAND is 5%, financial markets will buy US bonds? No, because now you get your um, higher interest and your increase in your um, South African value. If the expected depreciation of the RAND is 5%, the depreciation of the RAND is 5%, and financial market participants will buy US bonds? That one is correct because if the expected depreciation of the RAND is 5%, financial market participants will buy South African bonds. No, because then your, your increase in your um, interest will be um, depleted by the depreciation of the RAND. Okay, and this is this um, question explain, nicely explains the interest parity condition. Okay, any questions? Oh, you're all fine. No one has got any questions. Okay, then I'm going to end the class for tonight. Okay, have a good evening, everyone. Good luck with your studies.